Hello guys, welcome to Periodica YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss on clue hand and ulna paradox. If you like our video, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel Periodica. What is clue hand? Clue hand is a deformity of the hand which shows abnormal flexion in the fourth and the fifth finger. That means the ring finger and the liquid finger due to the damage of the ulna nerve at the wrist. So to learn about the clue hand, we should learn the pathway of the ulna nerve or the distribution of the ulna nerve. So I have drawn this image to show you the distribution of the ulna nerve. Ulna nerve is a branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. These three lines are representing the cords of the brachial plexus. So the uppermost line represents the lateral cord. This is the posterior cord and this is the medial cord. So as you can see, ulna nerve is a branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. It descends downward in the medial aspect of the arm, medial to the humerus. At the cubital fossa, it lies behind the medial epicondyle. So, ulna nerve is not a content of the cubital fossa. Then it enters the forearm between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. Then it comes to the hand by passing through the carpal tunnel. But it is not a content of the carpal tunnel. It goes above the flexor etnaculum. So, it is not a content of the carpal tunnel. It uh, travels in a separate uh, canal which is uh, bounded by the volar carpal ligament. At the arm, it does not supply any of the muscles. At the forearm, it supplies two muscles. They are the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and mainly it supplies the medial part of the or medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. At the hand, it supplies so many intrinsic muscles of the hand. Third and fourth lumbricus are one of those. In this image, I have shown you flexor digitorum profundus tendons. These green color structures are the flexor digitorum profundus tendons. As you can see, they are going to the medial four fingers up to the base of the distal phalanges. These tendons are involved in flexion of the interphalangeal joints. These brown color structures are the third lumbrical and the fourth lumbrical. As you can see, both third and fourth lumbricals are bipinnate. They are getting fibers from two directions. Third lumbrical attaches to the fourth finger or the ring finger. And the fourth lumbrical attaches to the fifth finger or the little finger. Both third and fourth lumbricals and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus tendon which are going to the fourth and fifth fingers are supplied by the ulna nerve. So both the flexor digitorum profundus tendons and the third and fourth lumbricals of the fourth and fifth fingers or the ring and the little fingers are supplied by the ulna nerve. What are the actions of lumbricals? Lumbricals are involving flexing the metacarpophalangeal joint of the fingers and extending the interphalangeal joint of the fingers. So you can see uh, action like this when lumbricals are contracting. So the third and fourth lumbricals are involving flexing the metacarpophalangeal joint of the ring finger and the little finger and extension of the interphalangeal joint of the ring finger and the little finger. So what is happening in the claw hand? When the ulnar nerve get damaged at the wrist, it will cut down the nerve supply to the lumbricals. So the third and fourth lumbricals will be paralyzed due to the damage to the ulnar nerve at the wrist. As you can see, here is the ulnar nerve. So the damage to the ulnar nerve at the wrist will impair the nerve supply to the third, third and fourth lumbricals. So these two muscles will be paralyzed. So the action done by the third and fourth lumbricals will be lost. So the metacarpophalangeal joint flexion and the interphalangeal joint extension of the ring finger and the little finger will be impaired. Though the lumbricals get paralyzed, Damage to the ulna nerve at the wrist will not impair the nerve supply of the flexor digitorum profundus tendons because flexor digitorum profundus muscle, the medial half, the half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle is supplied by the ulna nerve at the forearm. So damaged at the wrist will not affect the innervation of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. So the flexor digitorum profundus tendon will be intact both in the ring finger and the little finger. As the flexor digitorum profundus tendon is intact, and the lumbricals are damaged and paralyzed at the fourth and fifth finger, what will happen? Flexor digitorum profundus tendons will do the flexion of the interphalangeal joints. Lumbricals are involving in doing the extension of the interphalangeal joints. So this extension action will be impaired. In the neutral position, this neutral position of these fingers are maintained by both these muscles. So the extension of the lumbricus as well as the flexion of the interphalangeal flexion of the interphalangeal joint done by the flexor digitorum profundus tendon will maintain this neutral position. 
but when one muscle get paralyzed the action of the other muscle will get pronounced so the unopposed action of flexor digitorum profundus tendon will result in flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the fourth and fifth fingers so these fourth and fifth fingers interphalangeal joints will be flexed in a claw hand so what you can see in a patient who is having ulnar nerve damage at wrist is this this deformity is called the claw hand as this is resulting by the damage of the ulnar nerve this is also called the ulnar claw now we will find out what can cause this claw hand or ulnar claw people who are engaged in repetitive action to the wrist joint which involves pressure to the palm can develop ulnar claw hand so they are more prone to develop ulnar claw so people who are riding bicycles and motorcycles are more prone to get this so how can we prevent them from getting claw hand prevention of the claw hand can be done by applying splints to the wrist joint that is one thing that we can do to prevent claw hand the second thing is do regular exercises to strengthen the intrinsic muscles of the hand especially the interosseous muscle and the lumbricals so i think now you have a clear idea on how the claw hand develop in your hand and what are the preventive methods that we can apply to prevent from getting claw hand now we are going to see what is ulna paradox ulna paradox refers to different manifestations of the hand when the ulna nerve get damaged at two different sides one when it damaged at elbow in a proximal point and the second thing when it get, get damaged at wrist at a distal point basically this shows what happens when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a more proximal point at elbow and a distal point at wrist we have already discussed what happen when the ulnar nerve get damaged at wrist the deformity will be like this your ring finger and little finger will be abnormally flexed in the neutral position of the hand now we are going to learn what will happen to our hand when the ulnar nerve get damaged at elbow as you can see this is the part of the ulnar nerve so when the ulnar nerve get damaged at the elbow all the muscles it supply below the elbow level will be paralyzed so what are the muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve below the elbow point they are the flexor digitorum profundus tendons the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus tendons and the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle and in the hand it will supply lot of intrinsic muscles of the hand including the third and fourth lumbricals so when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a more proximal point both the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus tendons and the third and fourth lumbricals will be paralyzed so in this image you can again see the flexor digitorum profundus tendon in green color so these two tendons in the fourth and the fifth fingers will be supplied by the ulnar nerve and also this third lumbrical and the fourth lumbrical which are also going to the fourth and fifth fingers will be supplied by the ulnar nerve so when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a proximal point both these muscles will be paralyzed which are supplying the fourth and fifth fingers now you already know that flexor digitorum profundus tendon will be involving flexion of the interphalangeal joints and the lumbricals the third and fourth lumbricals will be involved in extension of the interphalangeal joints so when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a proximal point both flexor digitorum profundus tendons and lumbricals will be paralyzed so both flexion and extension of the interphalangeal joint will be impaired so we will see what will be the deformity then the deformity will be like this what happens is these two fingers the fourth and the fifth fingers will not be able to flex or either extend properly the interphalangeal joint will be will not be able to flex or extend properly so the clawing will be less pronounced so in conclusion when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a proximal point the clawing of fourth and fifth fingers will be less comparatively to the clawing that we can see when the ulnar nerve get damaged at a distal point at wrist so this is called ulnar paradox why we call this is a paradox because when a nerve get damaged more proximally we expect to see a more deformity than the nerve get damaged distally but in ulnar nerve damage when the damage is more proximal there will be less deformity but when the damage is more distal there will be more deformity so ulnar nerve damage will show a paradox so i think now you know about what is the ulnar paradox also this is the end of our video i think you have gained a knowledge on claw hand and ulnar paradox if you like our video don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel periodica thank you